In my previous videos, I briefly introduced the ideas of both Magnus Effect and Seam Shifted Wake, but in this video I'd like to further the understanding of both and introduce a pitch I've theorized that can utilize Seam Shifted Wake at a low efficiency. Let's go! A key part of how baseballs move is air deflection. So as this ball is traveling through the air, it's running into particles. So if we're talking about drag, that's because the particles when they first hit have high pressure on the baseball. And then as they go around, they come to the top perpendicular to the flight, it gets lighter and lighter pressure. But right about here at the top of the baseball, perpendicular to the ball's flight, it starts experiencing more pressure. Down it goes, down it goes, more pressure, more pressure, until at one point, the particle breaks off. And thousands and thousands of particles are doing that all around the baseball. Now, if the particle had gone all the way around to the other side of the baseball and dropped off, there would be no drag. But since it does, it forms a wake. And that the size of that wake determines how much drag is observed. As previously mentioned, the Magnus effect describes how a spinning baseball moves through these air particles. So as the particles are going above, below, around everything, the spin manipulates how they do so. So the air particles going with the spin stick onto the baseball longer. It's easier for it to get on the back because it has lower pressure. But for the, the air particles going against the spin, against the grain, they break off a bit earlier. So now you have particles breaking off earlier on the, on the side going against the spin and later on the side going with the spin, you're creating an imbalance. The wake is no longer just directly behind the baseball, but it's actually going in a direction. So in this case, the ball's spinning like this, this side breaks off early, this side stays with it, the air is going up, and by Newton's third law of motion, if the baseball's pushing the air up, the air is gonna push the baseball down. So in that sense, the Magnus effect is just spin-shifted wake. And as the name implies, Seam shifted wake is the exact same thing, except it's the seams that are causing imbalances in the air deflection. When talking about seam shifted wake, it's all about the hemisphere line. So imagine this baseball is traveling in the direction of this blue pen. That's its velocity vector. Now it doesn't really matter what direction it's traveling, but to illustrate where the hemisphere line is, let's set it to the North Pole, almost as if it were a globe. Now the equator, kind of this middle thick circumference area, would be the hemisphere line. Again, doesn't matter what direction, but if you set this vertical, it's that middle cut equator line. And that's roughly where you're gonna need the seams. Because the air will naturally break off to form the wake about 18 to 30 degrees behind the hemisphere line. That's where the pressure becomes too immense and the air, par air particles just break off. But if there's a seam present, either six degrees in front of the hemisphere line up to 18 degrees behind the hemisphere line, that air will break off early and you'll have an imbalance if the other side isn't the same. When designing a seam shifted wake pitch, you're trying to have seams in that 24 degree window on one side and not on the other. The greater the imbalance, the more movement. All the theorized pitches that utilize seam shifted wake are designed to be pretty efficient. So this is great if you're trying to convert those concepts to fastballs, change-ups, or even some curveballs, but it kind of leaves out pitches that are naturally designed to be inefficient, things like cutters and sliders. So this morning I went on to TexasLeaguers.com's spin visualizer and tried designing an inefficient pitch that would theoretically generate a seam-shifted wake. After plugging in various values for 30 minutes or so, I arrived at this seam orientation combination. If thrown correctly, one part of the hemisphere line will have a consistent belt of seams in the range causing early separation. Meanwhile, the other side would have a bit of a cluster on the front of the ball, but not close enough to the hemisphere line to cause early separation. Playing around with slight changes in gyro degree and spin direction, this one seam orientation can be the route to a plethora of seam shifted wake pitches. You just need to know what type of movement you're going for. What makes this pitch special is that, given you get the seam orientation correct, is that the effect only takes hold in a certain range of gyro degrees. So as the pitch is mid-flight and its velocity vector is changing due to gravity, the hemisphere line is shifting. So you can actually design it so you release it a certain way and then mid-flight, the hemisphere line shifts to the position that it needs to be in and then the effect starts taking hold. So you can make it late break 
because the effect is happening, you know, as the ball's already like halfway towards home plate, too late for the batter to actually see. So relative to a regular slider, it may have the same absolute movement, but it'll be breaking in a way that makes it so much harder for the batter to pick up on. Unfortunately, most pitching machines can't generate inefficient axes, so testing this pitch empirically for seam shifted weight is gonna be pretty difficult. But nonetheless, this is a frontier in baseball. In the everlasting arms race for knowledge, it wouldn't hurt to be the first to understand these effects. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Have a nice day. I just want to finish by giving a huge thanks to Barton Smith from BaseballAero.com. He's a professor of mechanical and aerospace engineering at Utah State University and has pretty much been driving the seam shifted weight conversation for a while now. And he has been so gracious in answering so many of my questions, both on this and other projects. So couldn't have done this without him.